Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special episode of the Chef Educator Podcast. My name is Dr. Colin Roach, and I am your host. Today's episode is titled, The Top 10 Tips for Remote Learning, and is basically the message I sent out to all of my students this week to help them adjust to online learning. I am sharing it here in this podcast in case you think any of your students may find the information to be helpful. And if so, please use it, share it as you see fit. And without any further delay, here is the message. Hello! I know many of you are having some challenges adjusting to this new normal of teaching and learning, so I put together this top 10 tips for remote learning that I thought I would share. Number one, make a weekly schedule. I suggest you use the course calendar and the syllabus to plot out your coursework for two weeks. Uh, Review the weekly modules and then make a schedule for those two weeks. So chunk it up instead of looking at the big, long course. Do it in two-week segments. Now, as you know, each weekly module will have a variety of tasks in it, such as you know reading chapters and articles and watching posted videos and reviewing narrated PowerPoints and writing, reading, and responding to discussion boards. So make a schedule for yourself based on each of the class course expectations. So find your classes, find the course expectations, and kind of find the schedule and chunk it up. Plan to start that coursework ahead of the due date as well. If you wait for the last minute or you know, for an online class, it's going to be difficult for you to accurately estimate how long each task will take. So start early so you have contingency plans. Number two, schedule when to do the work. So once you've got that weekly schedule from number one created, now you need to plan when you're going to do that work. When you no longer have a specific day and time that you need to physically go to class, you can turn on your computer and go to class anytime you want. And this can easily lead to procrastination. My advice, even though you're out of school, is try to stick to a schedule anyway. Make up a schedule. You know, plan a time each day when you're going to work on your coursework. You know, 10 to 12, whatever it is. It might be easy just to follow the class schedule you had when you were going to -to face-to-face classes. You know, maybe every Tuesday, Thursday, 2.30 to 4.30 is good. Or Monday, Wednesday, noon to 2, whatever it was. Main thing is figure out what's going to work for you and set up that schedule and stick to it. And then once you get the schedule, you can decide on the specific tasks you want to complete for each scheduled block of time you've set aside. Number three, learn to use the tools. You know, with classes now delivered online, you may be required to use various technological tools that you haven't used before. Discussion boards, video posting, virtual meetings, software that like Skype or Zoom. My advice, jump right in. Get familiar with these multimedia technologies, the various you learn tools, any software that's needed for your class. Get in there. Most are intuitive and easy to learn. Just a small amount of time invested in there. But if you do have trouble, reach out and get help. Remember, we all need to get digitally organized as quickly as we can so that we can you know, get on with the courses and get as effective and efficient as we can. Number four, create a space for your studies. When you're away from school in the traditional study spaces such as the library or classrooms, it's essential for you to create a study space area at your home. Whether you have an entire office, a desk in maybe the living room, or even a section of your kitchen table, you need to carve that out for yourself. Make sure it's clear so that you have space and it's organized with all the supplies you're going to need. And hopefully, it's available for your use anytime you you need it, that your schedule dictated. So it's kind of set aside for you. And number five, we need to remember family and school balance. When learning at home, it's often difficulty to balance assignments with the needs of your family. Maybe you have uh, like faculty, we have wives, husbands, partners, you got children. You know, there's a lot going on. So try to anticipate scheduling problems before they arise and come up with a solution that works for everybody. You know, majority of you are going to have siblings that are home. They're all trying to get on the computer, the Wi-Fi. They're trying to get their own space for their work. 
So try to anticipate those scheduling problems in advance and work something out for your household. Number six, stay motivated. This is a tough one. Online learning can present different challenges than if you were in the classroom. You know, it's easy when you're feeling burned out and tired of staring at the screen to stop working. You know, to maybe go off and do some social media, do some Facebook, do some Instagram. But remember, don't. Try to stay focused for that scheduled time. And remember, everyone has good days and bad days. The key is to keep trying. Don't give up. And some ways to stay motivated include staying connected with your classmates, which is number seven. So seven, as I just mentioned, is stay connected. Make an effort to stay connected to some of your classmates as this can not only be rewarding academically, but also socially. Remember, you're all going through this together. And to try to keep each other on track with the work and the assignments while also giving you someone to talk to besides your family or whoever you're sheltering in place with. Now, many of your teachers and classes have set up areas that you can go to to collaborate, you know, to meet remotely with your classmates and to work on class projects as well as socialize at the same time. So take advantage of these. Number eight, discuss what you're learning. Take your learning outside of the class and maybe talk to a friend or a relative who's interested in the topics you're studying. Tell them about what you're learning in all of your classes. You know, explaining or teaching the content or material to someone else will help you understand the information better and may help motivate you to keep working through a course. So pick a time when maybe you can share, maybe over the dinner table, when you're with your family. Hey, what did you learn today? What did you learn today? Share and discuss. It helps, it, it helps break it up from being so remotely just yours. And number nine is chart your progress. Setting goals for yourself in each class can be very helpful from a motivational standpoint. Tell yourself, I want to get a B on the next quiz or assignment. Or maybe do it for the whole course. I want to get out of this class with a 90 or above. Well, whenever you're feeling unmotivated, you can think about these goals. You know, periodic evaluation of your progress can help keep you on track. So set some of those goals, chart your progress as you go along. And the last one, number 10, ask for help when needed. So important. I can't stress this enough. We're all in this together and we need to help each other whenever possible. Although you won't be working with your professors face to face, it is still important to keep those communication channels open, build a remote relationship with them, and ask for help whenever necessary. They need to know if you are stuck, if you're confused, or you just need to talk. So don't hesitate to contact them whenever, because I know they are ready and willing to help you whenever you need it. Okay, I hope those 10 things help you. Bye now.